I'm going to let you guys decide who gets the first three. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yes, yeah, sit right there. Okay, sit. Sit in your chairs. Now, here's your opportunity to share. You want to share with us maybe uh, some of the things you came up with? Oh, yeah. Did you tear yeah. that apart? So I just, are well, you okay? I'm good, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, so, so guess, maybe share who you are and tell some of your great ideas. Yeah, so Christian Ballon, first year income medicine resident. Um, yeah. And one thing I thought of, we're required to spend so much time away um, from our family and friends um, that it might be nice to have like maybe some gift cards or something for like a date night occasionally. That might be nice. Um, and then even like a mentor program like from day one um, where we can get to know, whew, sorry, I'm out of breath. Um, get, to know, get to know an attending and they kind of um, take us under their wing. Um, and then also, and this is something that I really like about Good Sam, um, but um, like with presentations when we round every morning, um, I know that really ramps up my anxiety. So just having attendings that are um, maybe a little more aware of how um, how that really ramps us up, you know, just more aware of, of our anxiety there, yeah. Okay, like that seems pretty reasonable, like and not really, uh, that's, that's pretty low cost, like yeah, just so, being yeah. nice in the morning during rounding and less kind of brutal. <laughs> Like, that's pretty easy, right? You think that's something that they can do maybe next week? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, good. And then what about the date night idea? Like, so what would that be? They just give you, like, a gift card to some local restaurant to probably give them a great deal on discount? Like, if yeah. Good Sam went to a local restaurant with some romantic sweet place and said, look, we're going to buy 200 meals here yeah, for date like night a, for our residents, yeah. like, they could probably get half price, right? And then... What do they do? They just give them to you? Yeah, like after you, when? After you finish a month of medicine or whatever. Oh, like, then, oh, okay, uh, you get a date night. Get a date night. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, what are your great ideas and who are you? So, I'm Caroline Coulter. Okay. I'm family medicine. <laughs> So things that are really important to me to stay grounded is seeing the sun, being outside, um, maybe taking my dog outside and getting to experience that. And so that's something that I find really challenging. The days are short here. I don't know if you guys know. Um, and so just getting outside. So things that I thought could easily be done. What if we had a 20-minute scheduled appointment time to get some sunshine therapy during our clinic days or in between patients, you know? Um, what if it were scheduled with another resident? And then you could have some, throw some steam off and go for a walk. Um, it doesn't seem like it would be that hard to get a therapy dog in our clinic and then go hug a dog and bring it around. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so just to recap, that's just to have a therapy dog in the clinic, right? Mm -hmm. And so you could probably like go to the local humane society and create a program, you know, like they have at PetSmart or whatever, where you have like an adopt a dog program. And so like not only are you helping the residents with their need for like actual comfort and fun and love, which you don't always get to express with patients, right? Um, but you're also potentially finding a home for a local pet. And these could, you know, every week you could have a new one, because I bet by the end of the year, by the time they graduate, they'll all have three or four dogs now <laughs> each. So uh, it's a great way to uh, win-win situation, right? I think you might hear someone family medicine for second year. <laughs> I'm going to repeat out of some of the things that Google has done, and I think um, a couple other people as well. I think the big thing is household support. So we work long hours. There's nobody to run errands during business hours. So we fight to get that done. 
Um, so my thought was having like personal assistants that are one person per five or ten residents, and these people run errands for us, they grocery shop, and maybe pick up dry cleaning. I know, it's a stretch. <laughs> Are you injured? They might be. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, yeah, three. Three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let you guys all five. All five of you can stay because you because you're really eager. You know, action takers get rewarded in this world. I just want you to know that people who are on the edge of their seat for the next activity, it's like it's beautiful having people in that like that in in your life. So I just want to kudos to all five of you for being persistent. Yeah, the thing is, I have multiple gifts in this bag. It isn't just kind of a one bag thing. I can even take more people after you five. So depends what you pick out of the bag. So what do you think? So, Introduce yourself and so share. I'm Aaron, third year in internal medicine. My big one was to have scribes. So for internal medicine, family medicine, <laughs> it will never happen. But <laughs> so my alternative for that was possibly smaller patient loads or actually having a cap. I hear there's a cap somewhere, but I've never seen a cap hit. So, yeah, those are probably the two biggest ones. Okay, so one thing that I'd like to help you overcome is when you say, but that will never happen. It's sort of kind of a downer. You know what I mean? Like, this, this is the price is right, and you just never know. People are excited, you know, about winning luggage and little things and self esteem kits. And but the they thing could is, meet Bob Barker. What? They could meet Bob Barker. I'm close. <laughs> oh. No, but the thing is, I, I would just encourage you in general when you're in the realm of dreaming and creating something that's never been created. I mean, just because there is no ideal residency right now possibly in the United States doesn't mean that your residency can't be the first one to do this. So I just encourage you all to have um, positive feelings and, and you know, fall into that anything's possible realm because you've got such a cool dude back there. So you got like, it seems like he really wants to do the right thing. And I think he's taking a lot of notes. And, and at the end, we're going to collect all these and we're really going to try to implement as many as possible, I would think. Um, I don't want to speak for, for them. But anyway, yes, what do you think? Who are you? Uh, so I'm Zane Curtis, uh, TQI1, I'm a psychiatry resident. And I've been on the prices right, and this little trip to the front was like three times more intense than the original. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think there's a hole in my Sorry. pants somewhere. So, um, yeah, so uh, psychiatry resident, I may have a little more downtime than the rest of you. Um, so I work close, and at some point in the day, I usually have like a little period of time where a lot of people go get lunch, and I'm just like, what I would really like is if I could go to the gym during that period, and I would keep my pager on. But just like a little, you know, if we have like a little half hour period during the day, if we could go exercise, and some people could go outside and go on a walk during that period, but if it was just like, because I feel like I can't do that, like if I feel like I did that, I'd be like in trouble or something. So if I could just like use that time just to like run to the gym, go like get on the treadmill real quick, come back to work, the shower's there if I need them, or just like go lift for a little bit, that'd be awesome.
Do you all know there's all these tree houses in Southern Oregon? I try to go to all of them. I love them. I have like this little tree house think tank thing that I do with residents and medical students. It's so fun. Ask me about it later. Okay. Hello, I'm uh, Sydney Harvey. I'm a third year psych resident. Apparently, psych residents are the genre of the other. Wow. <laughs> uh, I have three things. One of them actually echoes um, Zane's suggestion about being able to go out and do something physical for like a certain period of time during the day, which hopefully doesn't count against lunch. Like, yeah. I'd like to have lunch and actually take care of my body, which would be cool. Um, the other one is if your work is done in the rare chance that you actually get it done before the end of the day, you could go home and have your page on if something comes up. But I think it's kind of ridiculous, like occasionally getting done and then being like stuck in the clinic till five o'clock is weird. Um, and my last one is like sharing a smile or a laugh at least once a day with your attending. Like that seems like it would help a lot. <laughs> kind of lumps in with there too um, and that was on the topic of like some protected time in the middle of the long day for something like eating lunch so um, more specifically I was thinking it'd be great if we didn't have lunch didactics um, so we didn't feel like obligated to like go to this lecture we gotta have like true down I'm gonna be mindful of my food and my eating or exercise or sit out in the sun or some like middle of the day wind down to prepare for the rest of it, particularly on inpatient rotations. Um, but I mean like protected time, like hey, it's noon, let's feed the residents kind of thing. Um, and the other main one I have on here that I feel hasn't been mentioned is um, I think personally it would be amazing if there was a consistent vegetarian option Ooh. in the cafeteria. That would yeah. 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 We're going to have three on Mondays. And then... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we have gifts for all these people. They get to pick something out of the bag. So good luck. There is one thing in here worth $3,500. Let's see. Don't look. You got to stick your hand in and feel. It's a feeling exercise. Oh my God! He picked that and then he got. <gasps> yes. What'd you get? Hundred dollars. Hundred dollar bill. All right. Oh my God! I got some pink paper. Well, open it up. You got. <laughs> Congratulations! You won a thirty-five hundred five-day retreat for physicians at Brighton Bush. Brighton Bush. Wow. All right. He won. He won the big prize today. Wow, that was good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait till you see what happens there. <laughs> All right, what'd you get? I got a journal. This is the beginning of anything you want. Yay! I feel less guilty about napping when I call it for some new dreams. <laughs> You want to really like approach a residency program and ask them to make some significant changes um, you go to their residency program website they probably already say they're doing these things you know like we love our residents holistic mind body you know so you use their own language right and you say well 
you know, on page one of the website, it says that this is how you treat your residents. I have a really cool idea on how you can actually do that. You know what I mean? Like, um, and just make it simple and easy and low cost, right? Because I'm sure if you presented something that was relatively easy to do, um, they would do it, I think. You know, especially if you have like a champion, like Sugat here, you know? If you have a champion <laughs> who's really into this stuff, right? And then you said, hey, like I already approached the restaurant in town that said they would do date night for the residents and they already told me, like do the work for them and then present the solution to them that's kind of like a no-brainer, yeah, we'll do that. And then um, I think that's the best approach. Does that make sense? Yeah. Versus like c complaining and just being like another patient that needs something. Oh, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? Like come up with the solution, the plan, make it cheap and easy, present it, and make it sound like their own language on the website okay. or their own brochures, you know? Yeah. Does that I can do make that. sense? Thank you. Can we give another round of applause? Um, that was uh, inspirational, uh, certainly uh, entertaining. And, you know, what's my goal in all of this? Healthcare is changing. We all know that. Medical education is changing, whether you know that or not. Being a new program, a relatively new program, we can be at the forefront of that educational model. Uh, I'm relatively young in this position. I'm dumb and naive. Take advantage of that to some degree, <laughs> right? I am not going to make changes to the program if it doesn't come from bottom up, because that's where the ideas come from. So you do have a partner, at least on the admin side, with your ideas. The program directors know this. I've met with the program directors, and I've instructed them to be innovative with their programs. I expect to see failures in their programs. To me, that tells me there are going to be successes. You have to try. You know, For every two successes, you're going to have one failure. And so, Changes in curriculum, changes in um, clinic models, uh, changes in duties hour. That's what I'm wanting to see and hear from the program directors. And the program directors are going to get those ideas with a collaborative residency group. Not a bitchy resident group, but a collaborative one. People coming up with ideas presenting ideas, coming up as a group. You can be cynical. You could just be sitting and just, and if that's okay, if you wanted to come to a program in which the structure is all there and you just have to do your check boxes, get put into the system and pumped out with your degree, if that's your goal, nothing is wrong with that. But I hope that you can see a little bit beyond yourself and do not only what's good for you, but what's good for the program and, and future generations of physicians. Um, that's one of the purposes of these uh, educational retreats. Uh, we're going to take a lot of the ideas. Uh, we are going to have speakers on finances in the near future, and on future retreats. Um, my promise to you, I'll read every one of those comments. All right. The treehouse idea, I really like. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, I promise you I would read all those comments, but your promise to me is to be active, to be part of your program in designing, be active not only at the program level but at the hospital level. This includes going back to quality. You know, why is admin going to spend any money on you folks if they see value, if they see you? participating in hospital committees, events that lead to tangible results. I mean, wouldn't it be great if the Quality Council came together, came up with a fantastic project that saved the hospital X dollars? Because let's be honest, the CEOs, that's, that's what they have to answer to, saving, you know, making the budget balance out. And if that's something I can point to and say, hey, the, this was a resident-run project that saved the hospital X amount of money. How about we give them damn daycare? That's something I can use. We're also limited by budget to some degree. 
So I encourage you to be active, participate in the RAC, participate in Resident Quality Committee, participate in your own programs, uh, um, quality events, and uh, I promise you things will change for the better. So thanks, another round of applause. <laughs> Yes. Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. Great. Great. Um, Pamela's going to be here. I think she was going to go back. Yeah, I'm going to sign books that are free.